Welcome to Rising Stars, where Miriam Knight, publisher of New Consciousness Review, interviews exciting new voices in the world of progressive and transformational books, films, and ideas who offer intriguing perspectives on life, the universe, and everything in between. Join us as we celebrate the conscious awakening and explore many expressions of consciousness in action. Welcome, welcome everyone to New Consciousness Review to the Rising Stars Show. I'm Miriam Knight, and today we have a slight departure in that I am interviewing Wes Burwell uh, about a product, but also about a book that he hasn't written yet, but I am seriously and strenuously encouraging him to write. Now, Wes Burrell studied electronics before delving into energy medicine, which he approached from the viewpoint of electrical theory and physics. He found that they are intricately involved on a cellular level, and he undertook extensive studies and certifications in many, <clears throat> excuse me, different disciplines, including biofeedback, uh, electroacupuncture, homeopathy, nutrition and detoxification, Ayurveda, um, and finally, uh, most recently, in laser therapy and LED light therapy. Now, he has helped design and develop new and innovative light therapy products, and he's contributed to the creation of the Parker University course on light therapy. I mean, he really knows his stuff. I've heard him speak a number of times, and that's why I am so pleased that he could join us today. Welcome, Wes. Hi, Miriam. Thank you. Now, you've studied all of these therapeutic modalities, but you seem to have put the emphasis on light therapy in recent years. Why light therapy? Well, uh, through practice, I've just found it to be probably the most powerful thing out there from an energetic perspective and helping the body to recover uh, relative to pain relief and any type of physical issue uh, due to the fact that it directly creates a stimulatory effect and helps with nerve regeneration um, and boosting cell tissue function. Now, this has been supported by FDA studies, and it's been extensively used in um, veterinary medicine, hasn't it? Yes, very much so. So we're not talking so much about an alternative therapy, but a, uh, a proven therapy that we're starting to understand in what I would call quantum ways. That's what I so loved about your last talk, and that's what I hope we're going to be talking, uh, exploring and explaining today. So how, in your understanding, does light therapy actually work? Well, it kind of works on two levels because it's directly affecting the energy of the body or the energy field of the body, which directly transcends down to the physical aspect. Uh, it's through the energetic body. That template is the primary uh, matrix which holds the physical tissue uh, in accordance. So whatever happens from the, you know, the consciousness level, how people think, how people feel, uh, directly affects uh, your natural template, which, of course, is held together relatively by your DNA uh, being the, the, the transfer of the light. And so as you use um, light therapy, any of these, I call them almost like wrinkles in the aura, which create deviations to the physical tissue, um, you can directly give uh, light therapy to those areas because really disease is a deficiency of light on a cellular level, which is kind of reflective of the chi or life energy, uh, being able to do and pull off the alchemy required for all the chemical combinations that need to occur to maintain health within the physical tissue. I've actually heard of cancer therapies that uh, shine light on, uh, try, you know, try to get light to the tumorous tissue. And uh, that seems to be the, the way to kind of correct the, the um, I guess, the deviations from normal. You know, lest, lest people feel that this is getting a little woo-woo, I, I just want to point out that uh, we eat 
light converted by plants and animals. That is the way we nourish ourselves. So this is far from far-fetched. And what you're talking about, Wes, if I understand correctly, is actually delivering the light directly to the cells without having to go through the digestion process. Correct. Um, when you digest your food, it's doing just that. It's breaking down on a molecular level so it can feed the cells. And through these chemical combinations uh, being broke down within the food, it elicits certain uh, wavelengths of light, different colors. Uh, and this, during those chemical reactions, the cells are actually metabolizing things as well, which gives off biophoton exchange between the cells because your cells actually do communicate with pulses of light. Uh, each different type of cell having their own uh, specific language per se uh, or or way that they they release this light as well as receive it so how do you think uh, our thoughts actually if affect the um, structure of the body well i 've created pretty much a um, model of the energetic body based on uh, light as well as optics and physics principles. And so pretty much the light that comes through the, uh, from the auric structure uh, coming through the different dimensions, uh, your chakra points are almost like focal lenses, which are collecting this light and the meridian system interconnects all of these uh, on the next subtle level up. And of course, this is the distribution part of the energy field, which is then feeding the physical tissue to be able to provide movement and, you know, to be dynamic and in constant uh, ability to adapt. Whereas the outer part is the primary supplier of, of this light and life energy at the same time. So as we think, we actually create uh, pretty much almost like a, a black hole would out in the universe, how it will actually attract and collect light and create an event horizon. So this belief or thought is what triggers this. And the more we hold on to this thought, um, it can collect more and more light as we accumulate more emotional energy concerning that issue. This thereby robs, robs light directly from the aura, which would be destined to be collected by the chakras to maintain uh, a healthy function as well as maintain your manifestation. So it's a direct enactment on the physical body uh, when this occurs, how we think and how we feel. And this can be beneficial to us or non-beneficial, all dependent on how we think and how we feel. People tend to forget that. You think of uh, positive affirmations, but all of our negative thoughts are just as powerful. So um, how does the physical body um, overcome the um, negativity in our Aura. How does it, you know, if we didn't have light therapy, how do we get better from an illness? Well, in most cases, there. Um, this is where supplementation, a lot of people will try to uh, use different types of uh, things of the earth to help, you know, give back that quotient of light. But in most cases, you're dealing with the digestive system, which has become compromised. And so uh, as soon as this is affected, the, the nervous system is the primary governor of the body. And I, I've always called it pretty much uh, the nervous system is a reflection of uh, the inception of your perception in the physical body. It directly enacts uh, and changes nerve function. And this is thereby how the body compensates. And when the muscles contract, this is also going to delineate blood flow into and out of an area, as well as lymphatic drainage. So this is when now the area is very restricted. The cells slowly start to suffocate due to lack of oxygen and a buildup of carbon dioxide and waste products. So as this occurs, the body has, is forced to comp compensate uh, due to whatever's going on because it's a, it's a holistic organism. Uh, anything you do to the body, the, the body has to maintain a level of compensation factors based on the stress response and, and everything that's affecting it. So the body has a specific margin where it can actually uh, embrace these things and it's able to adapt. But once you've reached pretty much your genetic limit of being able to compensate, this is when symptoms start to come forward and an accumulation of symptoms pretty much puts you on the pathway to what we call disease. So that's why young people think that they're immortal because they haven't run out of whatever compensatory factors that they were born with. Correct. And then they pay the piper. Yes, <laughs> so to speak. Uh, when they're young, their constitution is, of course, high. Their body is also in a different energy state as they progress 
through your life. In Ayurvedic medicine, you start off in the kapha period where the, the physical body is being given the greater quotient of energy. And when you hit a certain point around between 18 to 21, even up to 25 for some people, this is when it shifts into the pitta factor. This is where your, uh, your body goes into a state of maintenance. And of course, the energy is high for you to be able to maintain as well as function uh, with what you have. And then from there, you enter in, in the later years into the vata stage, where in essence, it's more the air ether component. So hopefully this is where you've definitely garnered some wisdom by this point uh, and are able to maintain the level of light required to keep the body healthy and functional. And the life energy kind of slowly prepares to back out of the system and there's less to work with. But if the body has been not you know, beat up from all of the conscious thought and hardened beliefs that they're holding on to, um, the body really has no issue and is able to maintain itself. So there is hope because if you uh, radiate the body with light, you can actually correct these deficiencies? Correct. What you're doing is giving a higher quotient of light for the life energy to negotiate and assist it with pulling off the chemistry required to to balance and uh, allow the body to function. Fascinating. So, Wes, I know that you're here. You're going to be giving a talk this weekend in Portland, Oregon. Um, where can people find out about that? Um, it'll be a free event that we're having at the Grand Hotel at Bridgeport. Uh, it's, the address is 7265 Southwest Hazel Fern Road in Tigard, Oregon. I've actually uh, posted that on the uh, NCR Facebook page. So if you are or go to the NCR website, ncreview.com, and you will see a link to it. Um, And Wes will be doing a lot more of these talks around the country. So um, it is well worth uh, attending if you have any kind of challenges that don't seem to be responding. Um, We're going to get into the uh, actual details of this technology in the next segment, but we have to take a break now, uh, and we will be right back speaking with Wesley Burwell after these. The best of the holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. Om Times Radio, IOM FM. Searching for a perspective beyond the mainstream? Check it out. Join your hosts, Yelito Pasquale and Diana Gold Holland, on Share International Radio for thought provoking views behind the news. Sundays at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern on Ohm Times Radio. You can also find us at shareontheairradio.org. This may be the message of hope you've been waiting for. Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the Internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. Ohm Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single Ohm Times endeavor. Host your show with Ohm Times Radio Network. As difficult as it is to believe, There are places in Africa where human traffickers sell albino children and their body parts for use in magic rituals. Humanity Healing International is actively working in Uganda to change this paradigm. The Albino Rescue Project finds albino children who are at risk and places them in safe schools and environments where they can learn and grow free from fear. To learn more or to sponsor a child, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. This is Terry Van Horn, and I want to invite you to join me for my weekly radio show, Hailing Light, on Ohm Times Radio, every Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. On Hailing Light, we want to bring love, light, and blessings into your world. You can find out more about us at www.healinglightonline.com. Blessings. 
Feed your soul with waves of consciousness on Ohm Times Radio. And we are back speaking with Wesley Burwell about in light therapies. And Wesley, um, you started studying uh, or working with laser lights and then moved on to working with LEDs. Um, tell us about what you were accomplishing with one and why you have switched to the LED system. Well, I had a um, great practice. Uh, a core of my practice was using laser therapy. Um, and then I actually was uh, pretty much on the road teaching it, uh, you know, laser acupuncture, as well as using uh, on trigger points, fascia release points, things such as that. Uh, but it, it takes a lot of understanding of the meridian system of the body, knowing where the apertures of, of entry are to donate the light and also understanding um, other aspects, which per se, they don't teach you in acupuncture. So there was a lot of uh, training, a lot of uh, learning, which was required to be able to be effective at that. One of the things that I found in using laser was that um, Probably about 85% of the population to 80% <clears throat> would respond wonderfully to laser as long as you, you know, you hit all the correct points for the proper amount of time, dosage, all these different parameters. Uh, but what I saw with uh, some of the population was uh, they just would not respond, whether you did it all correct or not. Uh, you could pretty much light them up till they glowed in the dark, but they still <laughs> would not get any type of uh, pain reduction or anything else. And I found a direct correlation with some of these people being very much, uh, how do I put it, um, very strong-willed or strong-minded. And so this really forced me to uh, take a look at research and, and other other pieces to find out why why people had this ability uh, to pretty much uh, to shut down the benefits that light was providing. Well, it really showed me that uh, through the coherence of laser, which means the light is pretty much structured and ordered, uh, for the most part, um, people are very accepting of that. That's your your 80% of people. But the people with strong wills were actually able to polarize against this light, which means they could actually shut down the response uh, just from their consciousness alone. And so this, this explained to me how, in essence, their cells were able to close the windows and not receive the light and thereby not uh, taking direct action within the cellular matrix, but were able to pass on the light. When... I started using LEDs, uh, interestingly enough, that whole factor disappeared due to the fact that it's incoherent light, which means uh, if you kind of compare the two with a quick analogy, it's almost like when you use laser light, it's like turning your garden hose to, uh, to jet, where it's a strong, powerful stream, and watering your flowers. Well, of course, you're going to water them, and it may knock them down, but they stand back up, and of course, being nourished by the water. Whereas with LEDs, it's almost like turning your hose onto, you know, a shower or mist where there's no offense directly to the body. And it's, it's being given so that the body can actually take the light and produce its own coherence because the auric structure and the light that's provided to manifest us is coherent light, but the body has its own coherence. So when you use a laser device per se, it, it forces coherence on the system. And if it's not able to accept it, then of course it, the body actually has to break that coherence down and then apply it to self. Whereas LEDs have not, I have not seen in practice uh, that this being the case. Um, that was really my governing factor to switch to LEDs. Um, it was, I brought in a lot of the people who did not respond to laser when I first started using the device and offered a free session. And out of the 86 people that I had, I had 49 show up. 26 of those people, um, when I put the lights on, just didn't do anything special with the light, working acupuncture, anything else like that. Just show me where it hurts, and I wrapped it up. And in 20 minutes, I saw 26 of those people actually had 100% pain reduction, and the rest of the group experienced anywhere from 30 to 90, which is far greater than the results that I had with them originally. So this really forced me to dig into the research. Why did this happen? And, of course, I found out about you know the polarization principle, uh, but also the fact that when you use a large surface area of lights, uh, and it really has little to do with the power aspect, but the larger the surface area uh, relative to the number of light sources, uh, this generates a much higher quotient, in fact, an exponential quotient of nitric oxide release. And of course, this is very important when it comes to creating vasodilation, uh, angiogenesis, and a whole host of other benefits, which directly lead and are involved in pain reduction. 
Uh, can you explain for our listeners what angiogenesis is? Angiogenesis is the promotion of new blood vessels uh, sprouting off your, your primary arteries uh, or the larger blood vessels, uh, the vein structures, what have you. So as we age, a lot of our, our smaller capillaries can actually close off and or become blocked. And of course, we can see this on our skin as our skin kind of ages, uh, you know, gracefully or even due to stress and an accelerated rate. So when you use the lights, you're able to either open that circulation back up, restore the blood supply in or out, or you, it will actually stimulate through the nitric oxide to rebuild this peripheral circulation and, of course, supply that area, giving a better perfusion. How fascinating. Does it also um, help regenerate nerves that might be um, damaged? Oh, this is one of the reasons why I got into light therapy in the first place, because primarily I, I used to have uh, a practice using primarily uh, biofeedback. And my sister-in-law, she had gone through a cancer surgery and um, the, the biofeedback works more on a microcurrent principle. So I was not able to stimulate the nerve function. Uh, during her operation, they, they removed the tumor, but they actually hit the phrenic nerve and she wasn't able to breathe on one side. So she only had about 7 to 10% lung function. So I was really scrambling to find something that would help to reactivate and stimulate these nerves. And because the, the biofeedback uh, and microcurrent therapy was not, not getting me where I needed to go with her. So uh, I incorporated light because all the, <clears throat> excuse me, the research was showing that light therapy had the ability to regenerate and stimulate new, new nerve growth and function. Uh, and so I started working on her and in one week she went from seven to ten percent lung function up to thirty five percent and continued to progress over the next three months uh, back up to 85 90 percent function that's astonishing uh, what what other types of of injury or disease have you found it particularly helpful for it's probably easier to tell you uh, what it won't work on than what it will um, <laughs> Because it's it's so far ranging. Because to me, the the body is light and sound. And of course, if deficiency or disease or or any type of issue is apparent, then you're dealing with a deficiency of light. And we're trusting the innate wisdom of the body will take that light and apply it as needed, uh, and you know work around depending on what the consciousness is holding on. But even then, it, I don't know anyone who really doesn't want to get better per se on a on a subconscious level. So it's. I've seen it work wonders with people who have had strokes, uh, traumatic brain injury, PTSD, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, anything neurologically based. Uh, I always see a difference, but I never know where it's going to stop for that person. You know, some people it can have a complete absolution of, of the condition. Other people, it will just, you know, get them to a certain space and then that's, that's where it stops. And we, we really never know because it's, it's completely up to the innate wisdom of the body to, to negotiate that directly. <laughs> That's a tricky thing to uh, negotiate, isn't it? Because people have all kinds of sometimes secondary gains uh, or, or uh, karmic influences or whatever they're working through that will keep them from healing. I totally believe that. Um, and I've seen it over and over again. Um, you know, you can have five people with the same type of condition and each one will respond differently. And when you look at the emotional caricature of those people or even their archetype, uh, you will you will see kind of why some people will heal rapidly, other people will not. And of course, I, I always want to honor whatever it is that they bring, you know, kind of bring to the plate and support them at whatever level I can. Um, but at the same time, honoring the fact of uh, where wherever they feel they need to stop is where they will. Mm. So um, you also did intensive studies in nutrition and detoxification. Do you usually recommend those interventions alongside the light therapy or the, is the light therapy enough? Um, I sometimes will uh, work with somebody to adjust some of their lifestyles uh, slash uh, nutritional aspects. Um, I do believe in the power of supplementation, but um, one of the first things I always try to go and, and correct is, is the neurological imbalance because it is the primary controller of where the cell tissue or the, the body is going to be contracted, 
wherever it's contracted because we have a sympathetic dominance relative to the nervous system, these become kind of like the brownout zones where the light is now deficient. And what's happening is wherever that contraction is occurring, this is where you know things of the earth, such as your food, supplementation, what have you, will actually start to pile up in the area. And so at some point, supplementation will actually be, in essence, rejected by the body. And I've seen this over and over again. Uh, many people would come to me and I would do uh, biofeedback screening with them. And I would find that most of the nutritional stuff they were taking was part of what was causing them their issues. So I would reduce that. And then we would start from ground zero, allow the body to clean that out, detoxify it. And, and then we could slowly introduce some of this nutrition going forward and or homeopathy to help balance things out. What do you mean by contraction? Uh, well, the, when the sympathetic nerve system is on, it's designed to for the body to take action. So in the case of uh, when we're stressed, you know, we'll automatically the muscles in the jaw will begin to fire, whether you clench or not, it's besides the point. <clears throat> and then from there, we probably all experience where the shoulders will become tight, you know, the head comes forward. Uh, and this, this ends up being a, a, a stuck on condition with a lot of people because they go from one stressor to the next and never really give themselves a break. <clears throat> and on top of that, uh, most of the population, um, which they probably don't even know about, uh, have a sympathetic contraction relative to one side of their body due to the dental. Right. Um, you talk a lot about proprioception. Um, what uh, is the influence of the uh, misalignment of the jaw or the clenching of the jaw? Well, the brain prior to, prioritizes information that it receives inside the mouth uh, through tactile sensation. So as one opens or closes their mouth, uh, one side at the back and the back molars, they will touch first on one side and then the other. So when this occurs, the brain picks that up as the high point and as the teeth on the other side touch, then it becomes the low point. So the brain picks this up oh. to balance the body specifically to that input. We're going to have to pick this up after the break because we are uh, going to break and we're speaking with Wesley Burwell about in-line therapies and all kinds of energy medicine. So stay with us. The best of holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Are you ready to shift your energy, consciousness, and limiting beliefs? Join me, Shafali Burns, every Monday at 5 p.m. Eastern on Shifting with Shafali here on Om Times Radio. Shift the blocks, limitations, and negative energies that have kept you from experiencing a life filled with joy, peace, love, abundance, and happiness. Are you ready to shift with Shafali? Are you ready to shine your brilliance? Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Simone Millicis would like you to know that business can be fun, which is why she wrote the book, Joy of Business. What if you could have the joy of business rather than the stress and struggle? Most of the time, the only thing stopping you from a thriving business is you. In the Joy of Business book, Simone gives you access consciousness tools and pragmatic ways to get out of your own way and to create the business, life, and living you know is possible and beyond what this reality says is achievable. Business is joy. It's creation. It's generative. It can be the adventure of living. You can purchase your copy of the book through Amazon or Joy of Business website, www.accessjoyofbusiness.com. Eros Evolution is where sexuality and spirituality meets. Join me, clinical sexologist Martha Tara Lee, on Eros Evolution on Thursdays, 4 p.m. Eastern on Om Times Radio. Your conscious lifestyle on steroids. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. With Wes Burwell about light therapy. Wes, you actually, um, because of your background and your extensive knowledge of the area, have been quite active in contributing to the development of 
the technology that you're using. Can you explain what the system uh, kind of looks like, how it works, and and uh, how it's applied? Sure. Uh, there's different types of controllers. They have uh, a two port, a three port, and a six port. And this just means you you can plug um, up to six pads directly into the controller unit. You know the, what the controller unit does is it's able to uh, it has different settings on it where you can uh, turn on different pulse rates that the lights will actually be turned on and off towards the tissue. And what we're trying to do is mimic uh, with this mimic the cellular communication and donate the light directly to the tissue. So. Using pulse light in a lot of your research has shown that it's uh, much more beneficial and the body embraces it with less less issue. So there's many different types of pads that you can use and they're flexible neoprene pads with the LEDs placed in them in different ways. So just by uh, using these, they're very flexible. You can pretty much attach it around an elbow, a knee, uh, or directly just flat on the body. And it'll run for approximately a 20 minute session and then it shuts off by default. So that way you're not over overdriving or over per se dosing an area uh, while you're doing this. Just makes it a whole lot easier for the user. So you talked about the, the pulsing of the light. Um, what are the LEDs themselves comprised of? What kind of wavelengths? Um, primarily they use uh, near infrared, uh, 880 nanometers, uh, as well as red LEDs, which are 640 nanometers, and blue LEDs, which are 430. Now, each of those respectively will penetrate the body uh, to a certain level, because this is kind of a requirement for photochemistry to work, and that's really what light therapy is. It's a branch of science known as photochemistry. So we're donating, instead of, uh, you know, like in a laboratory, you're using a Bunsen burner to donate energy in the form of heat to a solution to cause a chemical reaction. We're doing this at a much, much lower energy level uh, just by donating photons specifically. And different cell groups will actually absorb the different wavelengths, which also means colors, at different levels as well as a different concentrations. So the near infrared penetrates approximately up to four inches deep and it's collected by your denser tissues such as cartilage, ligaments, bones, things like that, as well as it's addressing all the tissues in between and helping to release the nitric oxide from the blood, endothelium, things such as that. Now the red penetrates approximately eight to 10 millimeters, which uh, is approximately about an inch, uh, helping with the soft tissue, the surface layers, whereas the blue is highly absorbed on, on the first three to four millimeters. So it doesn't go very deep, uh, but it's it's pretty much picked up and creates ac action all, in all three levels when you're using the three different colors. Hmm. So it, it the, the blue is more energetic. Um, I recall that you were talking about developing a purple uh, uh, pad. What would that do that the others wouldn't? I've used uh, violet light uh, in the past and still continue to use it. And I've seen some miraculous changes uh, relative to uh, things such as uh, birthmarks, which would be considered genetic damage. So I've actually seen the reversal of those and or just a lessening of, of the effects uh, that the person is experiencing with these. So uh, antibacterial properties, it helps to, you know, pretty much can kill certain bacteria just by short exposure time. Uh, things such as MRSA, uh, blue light can also directly affect that, whereas red light really won't do anything to it. So the different colors are have their own specific properties uh, in relation to how the body absorbs it, but also where the target zones are specifically. It reminds me of the work of Royal Raymond Reif, who was developing, uh, whose machine, the Reif machine, uh, was able to be tuned to different frequencies for different pathogens. So that was a much finer uh, type of adjustment, whereas yours is um, kind of a broader spectrum. Yes, it's, as I mentioned, it's very much wavelength dependent, not so much uh, in relation to the frequency, whereas Rife, Rife was more of finding the exact frequency, which would create, in essence, mechanical resonance to fracture or burst the membrane of the organism, and thereby causing it, of course, to die. Whereas the light creates more of a denaturation of the actual proteins 
and also uh, the respiration specifically of the pathogen and thereby, you know, reduce stopping it from being able to either uh, reproduce and or just causing straight up uh, death within the cell. So what we've been talking about is more or less uh, the physical, physiological mechanism of action. But as you said at the beginning, um, much of the contraction, much of the uh, deficit of energy is caused by our thoughts, our consciousness. So is it possible for the light to directly affect um, the psychological processes? Yes. And, and what I've seen, um, as I mentioned, due to the fact of uh, thoughts, beliefs that are being held onto in the aura deprive the cell tissue, which would normally uh, receive that quotient of light. So what we're doing is interceding with the light and directly feeding that tissue the light that it needs uh, to reenact and kickstart the chemistry. We're kind of clearing the way for the life energy to step back in and reseat itself. And so as someone experiences this, uh, the consciousness always has to allow. And of course, just by allowing, you know, to have the pads put on the area, uh, you're already, you know, they're already giving permission for that to take place. So it, it acts almost as a, a biofeedback aspect. Um, the cell tissue starts to relax, getting better blood flow, more movement through the area. And this reverberates obviously back to the consciousness. And of course, the consciousness handshakes and in, in, in aspect, like an example would be, well, that, that feels good. It does it feels so much better. The pain's gone. And so in doing so, this directly affects how the person thinks and feels about it. And they can actually dissolve and reduce that emotional energy out in the, out in the actual auric field. So now you don't have such a large deficiency of light. And what'll happen is it'll, it'll help bring the person back to the original uh, point or idea, which started the whole ball rolling on the emotional accumulation in the first place. So will it actually raise them to a different level of consciousness? Um, well, there's no guarantee of that because, of course, that is completely controlled by the, the individual. But what it will do, it'll take the emotional encumbrance, per se, off of an issue uh, that they've been dealing with and or struggling with. Um, I've used the example before where, you know, say if when I was a child, my one of my parents called me stupid. So then I will hold on to this for a long period of time. And constantly my mind and heart will be arguing because my heart will always tell me the truth saying, you know, you're not stupid, but my mind will find every excuse to convict me due to the fact that my parents are my first version of, of divine. You know, they feed me, they look after me, they take care of me. So they're pretty much equated with God. So sooner or later you convict yourself and then you continue through your lifeline uh, every time you know being called stupid it brings this emotional charge back to you you keep re-experiencing it from your past but it accumulates in your present and so this is how you accumulate this excess emotional energy so when you use light therapy and i've seen this over and over with clients the things that used to trigger them or cause them uh, some form of suffering it tremendously reduces it so that they can actually allow that heart mind communication to occur where finally the heart can speak through and the, the brain accepts it and realizes because even people who have done a lot of emotional work, I find that um, they may have resolved the issue, but on a residual aspect, the physical tissue, not enough willpower is being given back to the body for it to be enacted and allow the life energy to come back in and shift and, and change the physical. And it's interesting because the people who have done uh, a lot of that emotional work, um, those people seem to experience, um, you know, rapid uh, transitions, like what we would call almost like a miracle healing sort of thing, uh, where, you know, putting it on a knee one time, you can get rid of an issue that's 20 to 30 years old, that's been nagging them throughout their life every time the weather changes. So I've seen in one session how this is just cleared out. And it's very integral to that whole process that I was talking about. How fascinating, because my husband, who's a hypnotherapist, uh, deals with similar issues uh, through the root of consciousness. And what you're doing is removing the residue of tension and anxiety at the cellular level so that it can evaporate at the consciousness level. It's kind of coming at it from the other side. Yes, yes, very much so. How fascinating. 
Now, if you to do both together, then it's it's pretty amazing how it can change things. Yeah, yeah. So, um, what do you think is the future of light therapy? Where is it going from here? Is there a a, a development area that you would like to see happen? Um. Just in the last few years, I've been seeing uh, a large incidence of, you know, out in the field where light is being utilized, working on things such as uh, traumatic brain injury, PTSD, uh, depression symptoms, things like that. And with the recent discovery that the the brain actually has a lymphatic system, which I've always held to be true in the first place, uh, otherwise the actions wouldn't occur with, you know, somebody having a stroke and then being able to completely recover and back to walking and feeling and everything else. So you have to be able to drain an area specifically to get rid of those uh, compounded toxicities and or even food collected in the tissues so that regeneration can start. And so... Um, I'm seeing a lot of work being done uh, primarily with brain health, um, also depression, things such as that. And a lot of the studies are, are being done now at this period in time uh, with these things. And of course, they really don't have um, any way to, to kind of support and help these people other than giving them medications, which pretty much nullifies, uh, you know, the body's response to the consciousness saying, you know, it's, it, it's shutting shutting down the uh, the body's outcry to to fix the problem because there's really nothing they can do relative to you know satisfying and addressing the specific cause. Um, some of the preliminary stuff that I've seen is pretty tremendous, like um, helping with the biochemical uh, aspects directly within the brain. The light can pass through transcranially and directly create angiogenesis in the brain, ATP production. Uh, people are able to think clear, better cognitive function, memory capacity, um, their behavior changes. They don't have the anger outbursts. And I've seen this with uh, children with ADD, ADHD, even autism, uh, tremendous changes. And then people with, you know, with all the other types of uh, neurological problems. That's pretty darn impressive. Well, we're going to take our last break, and then we will be back speaking with Wesley Burwell. Stay tuned. Bringing a more conscious lifestyle to your world. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. The truth is, you can't change the world if you're broke. I know, I tried. Isn't it time you turned your life's calling into a profitable, freedom-based business? I'm Michelle Barr. Join me every Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern for Sacred Success. Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the Internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. Ohm Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single Ohm Times endeavor. Host your show with Ohm Times Radio Network. The number one reason girls drop out of school in sub-Saharan Africa is lack of access to feminine hygiene products. The Pads for School Girls Project, an outreach of Humanity Healing International, is changing this paradigm by setting up sewing programs at schools, teaching girls a vocational skill, while producing the reusable pads that help keep them attending classes. The girls pay it forward by making and giving pad kits to other girls in need. To learn more, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. Circle of Hearts Radio is a sanctuary on the airwaves. Join me, Grandmother Elia, in the circle on Sunday, 2 p.m. Eastern, as I share information to both enlighten and nourish your soul. A conscious lifestyle for a mindful life. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Welcome back. We're speaking with Wesley Burwell. And I'm Miriam Knight. And just before the break, we were talking about the the sort of physical mechanism of action. Now, I know, Wes, that you started out 
but as a scientist, as as an engineer, looking at the the hard facts, and at some stage you seem to have opened the door to a more spiritual component of your uh, understanding. I'm kind of wondering, you know, we're, we're always interested in that interface between science and consciousness. Where are you on that spectrum and where do you see it going? Um, well, I can only speak from my own personal experience um, in relation to that. Um, when my sister-in-law developed cancer, um, I was working in industry at the time. And when my brother told me what was going, you know, what she had been diagnosed with, um, I was already, you know, leading a, a religious, spiritual life, what have you. But um, so from that conversation, uh, I became very angry and frustrated uh, because I, I had looked at, you know, and seen many people who had fallen to cancer. And I just was heartfelt that this was not going to happen and there had to be some way we could fix it. So I had a bit of an angry conversation with God and said, um, you're divine. There isn't anything you can't do. So I'm calling you on your word. And I'm saying, uh, it says, ask and you shall receive. So I'm asking and I'm willing to receive and let go of whatever's in the way for this information to come in. Um, so if you can show me how this can be fixed. And so three nights later, I was taking in a uh, amazing uh, lucid dream where I was put into a classroom and educated on, you know, the principles of biofeedback and then also a device. So this is really where everything started for me. And um, I found out the next day that these devices actually, uh, you know, are, were a reality. And so this is when I really took a left turn uh, into the whole field and began exploring all different types of energy devices and started off with the biofeedback and it led me to light. And um, I've been, just going forward ever since it's it's been an interesting relationship because after that um, I became very sick personally I probably lost about 30 pounds and I, I equated to my spirit was pretty much emptying me out so I could be filled again and after that experience it was almost like I was getting constant downloads on on all these different things, including the, the construct of the light body, how it works, how it functions, and having no background on any of this stuff. So it was, it was quite extraordinary. And uh, now it's, uh, I can intuitively just, you know, go within, pray, meditate, and ask, and any information that I, I kind of need, it just kind of gets dropped, you know, downloaded to me, um, sometimes in process, sometimes the next day. I never know when, but um, it's it's been a very interesting life since that experience, to say the least. <laughs> I'll bet. I wanted to ask you earlier, and I'll ask you now, um, the sun is um, our friend or not our friend? Uh, well, let's face it, without the sun, uh, there would be no life on Earth. So... Uh, I would definitely classify it as a friend, um, but a little bit of uh, too much company, even from a friend, can be uh, sometimes a little offensive. So it's it's always about finding balance. Um, we definitely need to have sunlight uh, to you know for the earth to grow to prosper. But this is also why the divine set the planet up so that we have a period of daylight to have a rest from the sun. And uh, would the sun also uh, be beneficial? Does it mimic the um, action or <laughs> does, does the light therapy system mimic the action of the sun? How is it different? Well, very much so. Uh, and interestingly enough, um, with the, the infrared uh, wavelength that is used within the device, um, this is actually within that bandwidth. Um, it is actually... Uh, pretty much blocked in the atmosphere so that we don't really get the full capacity of that, of that wavelength for our bodies. So, our, and our atmosphere was obviously different, you know, hundreds and hundreds of years ago. And then they, they figured this is how people were able to live, you know, five, five, 600 years old due to our atmospheric conditions being different. Well, with the atmosphere we have today, um, some of these beneficial wavelengths are actually being blocked, be it by pollution or just earth changes. Uh, so this is one of the things that I've, I've seen how it can help give to the body on a basis that our sun just can't. Now, of course, the blue and red, we, we definitely get from the sun. 
um, but it's not in a pulse state. It's in a constant, uh, continuous continuous state, which can range in amplitude or power level uh, as the sun has, you know, sunbursts, um, what have you, solar flares. Mm -hmm. Well, we know that the body uh, uses the sun to produce things like vitamin D. Um, that's, that's a photochemical process initiated by the sun. So there's no reason to uh, believe that it uh, uh, would not respond to the LED um, therapy. Correct. <clears throat> with the the sun provides us many different beneficial wavelengths, uh, even with UV, which of course is considered ionizing radiation. Now, of course, we don't use any any UV or ionizing radiation, but by damaging uh, with with UV B and C, it can cause mild damage to the surface of the skin. But this also helps to uh, assist the body to you know, cash out some of these cells and help to regenerate. And as you mentioned with the whole vitamin D aspect, its production is is directly from the body trying to protect itself from the sun, but setting it up to be able to absorb it so it doesn't create further damage. And part of that process, because the body's very efficient, uh, it utilizes that to convert uh, in, into vitamin D. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So where where are you taking it from here, Wes? Um, well, I've, I've uh, been pretty much given many different opportunities uh, working with light. Uh, I've got a project that I'm, I'm very excited about. I've been invited to um, utilize light therapy, in essence, or use, usage of light to help um, stimulate and grow stem cells in a lab. But we're also talking about pre- and post-injection of these stem cells. Uh, you know, we're going to increase the, the growth rate within the lab itself, but also um, guaranteeing the effectiveness when people get these stem cell injection, uh, injections going forward. Because a lot of cases, you know, they can be anywhere from 60 to 70% effective, and it's a very costly treatment. But whereas when incorporating light therapy with it, uh, the effectiveness goes up to 85, 90%. So we can kind of almost create more of an insurance relative to the results. But what I find interesting is that's one of the core components that light therapy has already proven itself and, able to, and is able to stimulate uh, the body's own stem cells without need for injection. But in the case of if there's too much uh, degeneration, well, then, of course, it's definitely warranted. Is this something that you can use uh, on pregnant people? Yes, you can. Uh, just not directly over the area where the fetus is actually developing. Mm -hmm. uh, with, with my wife, um, I use light therapy, you know, to help resolve swelling in her feet, um, you know, sore ankles, some, you know, lower back issues, but just using a low intensity and just small amount of dosage. But uh, for the most part, if people have any issues with it, you know, they can just completely avoid it and, and work everywhere else on, on the whole body, uh, except for where the fetus is developing. Hmm. It would be interesting. You were talking about stimulating stem cells. Um, it would be interesting to know if it could help like with in vitro fertilization or uh, they're talking about growing like ears and, and, and tissues on uh, uh, scaffolding for uh, implanting back into humans. You know, if it would have an effect on the growth of the, these tissues. Actually, there's already research articles you can find on PubMed that have that are supporting exactly what you're talking about. Ooh, cool. Yep. Great. So do you have like a website where people could find out more about this or where would you suggest people inform themselves? Um, my website currently is under construction. I'm putting together for it to be a resource site. Uh, where people will be able to access studies, um, look at some of the latest research on how light's being used, uh, and you know, be able to do their own their own research. Because uh, I'm I'm very much on that whole aspect. Uh, there's well over four thousand research articles on light therapy uh, at present, and it and the numbers continue to grow. Um, I also want to work directly with uh, people to be able to give presentations on this new, on this new uh, technology and research uh, in the future. So the website I'm developing, it's just uh, www.wesleyburwell.com. 
And um, this is going to be the future, uh, like I said, resource site for people who, who want to learn more about light, but also people who decide that they want to become a practitioner or even just for home use, uh, where they, there'll be protocols that they can download and uh, get directions on how to properly use it to get results and benefits. In the meantime, um, what would they put in as a search term, in, say, in Google uh, to find out about it? One of the primary places you can access uh, research articles is it's pubmed.com. It's you know just P-U-B-M-E-D, which is short form for published medical articles. Mm-hmm. Um, you can once you get onto the site, then you can put in the search bar, put in LLLT, which just stands for low level light therapy, uh, and then just enter that into the search bar, hit enter, and all of the the studies will come up. If you want to further refine your search. You can put LLLT space and then whatever condition, disease, issue, what have you, uh, you can put in beside it and it'll pull up any light uh, related articles on those conditions. And one of the things I usually tell people as well, you, you may find that certain conditions, there's no studies specific on it, but with using an LED system, we know for a fact that this generates a large amount of nitric oxide. So I always tell people, put in nitric oxide space and then uh, whatever type of condition. And you can see the correlation on on whether light therapy would be able to support on some level uh, right. this type of condition. due to the And fact- this is nitric, not nitrous oxide. Correct. Well, that brings us to the end of the show, unfortunately. But it's been a delight having you with us, Wes. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Wesley Burrow, Burwell, B-U-R-W-E-L-L, and it's Light Wellness Systems. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, I hope you'll visit my website, ncreview.com, for lots more books, films, and fascinating interviews. Be well, everyone, and join us next week. Lots of love. Bye for now. <laughs>